today we're going to make a show sign for show truck. All right, I'm going to kind of try to narrate y'all through this process. I know that on this show sign that I'm doing that they want to have a portrait of their truck. So I start off with figuring out what the truck's going to look like. A um, little bitty sketch on the side there, figuring out the whole layout of this. I actually did some other sketches as well. Um, after doing that little sketch, though, jump into figuring out the overall That's where composition everything's going to be placed. Of, for me, everything panel. on these starts with pencils. I've incorporated on this the C10 logo, which we'll end up doing as, or the C10 badge from around this time period, which we'll end up doing in kind of like a faux chrome, make it look like the badge is actually stuck to the plaque here. For the lettering, I actually looked to old advertisement from around the same time period and kind of tried to keep it in the same letter style as those letters were in the advertisement. That's the lettering for where it says 1964 C10 that I'm referencing. The lettering on the bottom, I tried to use a quick style that I knew I could execute well with the brush. A little trick that I'm using here that you can see is I drew it all out um, with all the margins to the left, and then I'm cutting it into strips. I will fold each one of those in half, matching up the ends of the letters so I can get the center of those letters, and then I can use all those center marks to center all these letters up. So after I center all those up with each other, then I take it back to my paper drawing that I did and where the hole is where I cut all those letters out, I'm going to center those up um, with that hole so that it's centered to the sign, or I guess not with the hole, but to the center of the sign. So now that we've got the drawing figured out as far as where the lettering and all is going to be, where the overall composition is, Lay it out on my signboard. The signboard was pre-painted by a friend of mine, uh, Sig Shot, who actually painted the same color as the truck. So once I've got that lined out where I want it to, then it's time to trace it um, off with Sorrel paper underneath it so it transfers my design to the board. So another tip on this, I like to use a ballpoint pen whenever I do my tracing. Most of the time the ballpoint pen will show up on the paper and it helps me know where I've already drawn. That way I'm not wasting time going over it or second guessing myself as much. Sometimes that pen doesn't really show up on the paper. Um, it's alright because it leaves enough of a dent or an impression that I can tell where it is that I've been. When I go to do the hard straight lines on the design I like to use a triangle or some other sort of straight edge. Um, try and keep those as crisp as possible even in transferring my design. Alright, so once all of the lettering is transferred over, then I'm going to take my more detailed drawing that I did on tracing paper and lay it over the top of this, that way I can get it lined up exactly where I want it. And then I'll go ahead and trace off the truck, again using this raw paper underneath it. I know there's people out there that would just transfer an actual photograph of the truck or something to come back and paint, but I really love drawing. It's kind of the whole point, and me going full-time doing this is so that I could have a full-time job drawing. Um, not really so much to make money, I guess. Maybe that's uh, my biggest downfall. <laughs> a lot more interested in, in making a living doing what I love than just making a lot of money. Maybe one day I'll change my tune and then I'll uh, make the big bucks, right? So you can see on here the blue tracing from the Sorrel paper that's left, that's my pattern. And I had a lot of people ask me about my process for doing chrome, chrome lettering and chrome badges and stuff like that. So it's kind of why I'm showing you guys all the steps on this. As you can see, I started off with a little bit of white, putting some highlights, and then I've got blue there and I'm actually double loading the brush. So it has a little bit of blue on one side of it, a little bit of white on the other. So whenever I pull these, it kind of has a little bit of a fade to it already. This will help to give that illusion of chrome. Um, some of my theories on chrome, that kind of helps me to figure it out because I always get people ask questions on this stuff too, is anything that's facing up, right, or the top part of anything is going to reflect the sky. Uh, it's reflecting what it is above it. It's basically a mirror. Anything that's facing down um, is facing the ground, so it's going to reflect wherever the ground colors are. So the top parts of things, um, the top parts of the chiseled part of the Chevy deal there are all facing up. So I'm trying to make those reflect the sky. 
in the center part of this, I'm kind of making that up a little bit and looking like it's reflecting out, so it's sort of an abstract landscape. Top part of it being the sky, bottom part of it being the ground. I usually pick one side, in this case the left side, and also let that sort of reflect a little bit more of that sky, like my light source is coming from the left and, and hitting that left side of everything. I think I'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit more here, um, or speed this up so we can get to the parts where you can see me starting to put in more of the ground colors. Alright, so now I've mixed up some gray. I'll end up adding some blacks and stuff into that later. Different uh, varieties of, of gray in there. But I'm using this now to paint the bottoms of stuff. Stuff that is reflecting down. We'll say maybe it's concrete or asphalt or something that it's looking at. A little hard to see in this. It kind of looks close to the blue, but if you guys were to zoom in somehow, blow it up on your screen, you'll be able to see that I'm starting off with that gray. Again, in this flat part of the badge there, it's going to be like a little landscape, so we're sort of showing that asphalt or concrete or whatever it is. It's all made up in there. <laughs> it's just whatever works right. So I've taken a darker color now, and again, kind of how I look at stuff with this is there's a horizon line, right? So that dark color is right underneath the horizon line, and I'm blending down from it. So as things get closer to that horizon line in Chrome for me, the way I do it, um, the bottom part, it gets darker as it comes up to it, and then the sky is going to get lighter as it comes to that little horizon line. And that's the same thing inside of all the little parts too. Um, anything that is facing down, it's going to get a little darker as it gets to that top edge of stuff. Um, the sky, it's going to get lighter as it gets to that bottom edge of whatever that surface is there. This starts to give us that illusion that we're looking for there. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up until we get to our next color, which is the black. And that's where we're going to start seeing a lot more definition and a lot more contrast. Alright, so before I was using a lettering quill because it's fat and wide and I can do blends with it and I can double load it and stuff so I can get all those little fades with the grays. Now I'm coming in with a Mac virus brush. Um, kind of a liner. Uh, some people use it for scrolling, some people use it for details and stuff. And I'm coming through and I'm, I'm defining edges, I'm defining the horizon line. Sometimes in these on the horizon line I'll put like little trees or cars or people walking around and stuff like that. This one I'm trying to keep that a little bit more simple. Uh, usually I'm doing that if I'm painting like a bumper or something like that in a painting. Maybe sometimes I even like to put a little self-portrait of myself in there. Uh, people come through and they see those and they try to find me in the reflections. It adds to the fun to it. Again, right now I'm going through, we're defining edges, and we're making horizon lines. And that horizon line being black is, to me, a lot of what really makes it look like chrome. You can leave little splits and stuff where there's gray popping through. Uh, one of my favorite artists that does this is Paul Quinn. Uh, I like watching how many little splits he puts in the black. It really adds to it, makes it a little bit more unique. But that's kind of this process right here. We started off with, you know, light things facing up are going to be blue. Facing down is going to be my gray in this. And then my black comes back and makes my horizon lines, makes my edges and stuff. As you can see right here, I'm adding those little... Uh, I don't know, rough edges, organic edges and stuff. Almost looks like trees or something. But that's the chrome process. Let's go ahead and move to the next part. part. And that next part is shadows. So I'm putting shadows on the right sides of anything that's dimensional and on the bottom sides of it. Just a little bit so that it helps it lift up off that surface. Um, after I'm done with the shadows, I'm coming through and I'm doing highlights. Uh, straight white. Come through with the straight white crisping up some of those edges that reflect up or before I reflected or some of the ones that reflected down I, I crispened up with the black this time we're adding that little highlight to it and then I'll come through and do some little pops just little pops of white in corners um, little parts of stuff breaking that up making it look like light is reflecting off of that again keeping in mind that my light source is to my top left 
Okay, so now I'm putting some red on that brush and I'm making a little bit of red reflect into the chrome so that that background surface is reflecting onto it. Um, just adding more depth, right? Adding more to the realism of it. After that, darker red. I just mixed that red with black and now I'm making a cast shadow. Did a little bit of shadowing on the edge before to crispen it up. This time we're making it pop even more by making a little bit wider cast shadow with the dark red. Alright, so the next layer to add in depth to this, now I've come with a little bit darker crisper blue and just almost as like a contrast kind of thing. I add a little bit of that blue to the top edge of all those letters. I know that was a bit of a deep dive on the chrome part, but I really have had a lot of people ask, and I told them that in this video I would explain some of that. Maybe in a future video we do just the chrome process. Uh, as you can see in the background on this now, I'm working on the truck, starting off with all of my shadows and red. It's going to be a red truck on a red background, so it's going to be those shadows and highlights that really make it stand out. I don't want to go too deep into the process here for the truck stuff because a lot of it is the same as the chrome. Things that reflect down or have shadows on them are going to be dark. Things that reflect up are going to have some little bit of blue highlights on them um, to reflect that sky. Even if it's on a red surface, I'll add a little bit of blue into the color. Um, and then, you know, brighter highlights and stuff, you're adding depth. Start big and come back and do all the details smaller and smaller as you go. Something to point out, and you can kind of see on the bottom of this, there's white paper there. Um, I started at the top and started working my way down. I left the white paper over those letters. That way I'm not smudging what I've already traced there. just allows me to not have to wait for that paint to dry before working on, you know, the little portrait of the truck and stuff. And allows me to just keep working a little bit faster. But... Little tip, work from the top to the bottom if you're trying to work wet on wet and save time and uh, keep that paper over stuff. Keeps you from smudging stuff. You can do that when you're drawing too. You have the paper underneath your hands so you're not smudging your pencils. Kind of another little thing to note um, in doing something like this, it's not done completely in a vacuum and 100% out of my head. I have photo references that I'm looking at for highlights and stuff. It's not one photograph that I'm copying. I started off by drawing a box, basically, for the design that I wanted, and then shaping that box into the truck that I'm looking for. Uh, get a whole bunch of different pictures. I've got three or four pictures of the truck while I'm working on this. I've got three or four pictures of other trucks where maybe I like the reflections and stuff better. Perhaps they're different color trucks. I think one of them was white truck, uh, blue truck doesn't really matter on that. It's looking where highlights hit on stuff and then also looking at things to make sure that I'm getting the details of the specific trucks. What wheels did they put on it? Um, what badges did they leave on or take off? Different modifications and stuff that they did. Anyhow, you look at your references as references, not necessarily as something to copy. You can sit there and copy something, but I find, at least for me, I don't like the results of that as much as I do something that I'm making a lot more creative decisions over. Projects like this are not quick, and in this, I came back after a day of painting. What I had done on the truck was dry, maybe not 100% done, but it was time to come and go ahead and get those letters done at the top so I can then work from the top to the bottom and not have my hand in wet paint. If you notice, I chose to use white for the letters 1964. To me, that's one of the most important parts of this um, show sign here is to let people know what year the truck is. And second to that is what kind of truck it is. So white being the highest contrast I'm going to have from that red becomes the 1964. And then what kind of truck it is put in something that's not quite as high of contrast, but still a good high contrast, um, using imitation gold here. To try and pull that contrast a little bit more for these, I went through, and I didn't film it, but I went through and outlined those letters with black. Um, just giving a little bit more contrast so it stands out a little bit more from that background. And then after outlining those in black, come through and start outlining parts of the truck and adding details in black. This 
might be my favorite part in painting the trucks and other cars and stuff like that because it's what starts to really make it look finished. Going back to our chrome process, not only am I defining stuff with this black, but I also go through and that's where I start putting like um, little horizon lines inside of the chrome and things like that. You can see on the headlight bezels, the bumper, end up doing it on the mirror, wheels, all of those things get that. I mentioned the letter styling for this bottom part before, but really it's just something that's easy. Um, I can do down pulls or down strokes on all the letters and get through them pretty quick and it still looks pretty nice and has a little bit of almost like a speed look to it. So the last little part of this project here is really just breaking up the background, outlining some things with some pinstripe, giving some borders, um, breaking up a little bit more with just some sort of lines that go through the background, just to add some depth and again break up all that red. Without keeping y'all waiting any longer, here are some shots of the finished of it. Lots of details, lots of glares and stuff on the uh, truck. Lettering, I actually had to correct some lettering on this one. They had given me the wrong spelling of the X-Stitch company that did the interior, so I had to come back. You can see in the very last shots um, with its buddies here, that lettering has been fixed. So, If y'all like this video, please click the like button. Um, give me comments, give me feedback. If this was way too in-depth, let me know. Uh, or if you want more content like this, let me know that too. Have a good day.